Hey, greetings everybody, Chris here. It's, uh, what is today? It is Saturday, it is May 2nd. So, wanted to give a quick COVID update uh, coming to you from Wasilla, Alaska. Uh, so things seem to be getting, well, they seem to be getting better. Uh, I know for my personal life, spring is here. And so I'll, I'll tell you just the, the, the change that spring brings to my mood and the way I see things is often a positive, just that. But when I look at, uh, when I look at the, the data and the number of uh, uh, diagnosed cases that we're finding in Alaska, they're shrinking. So we're gonna look a little bit at, uh, at the data that's coming out of our Department of Health and Social Services, look at the, what the trend looks like there. Uh, the, the story for oil in Alaska for me is, is that's the one I'm more looking at because the price of oil has just not done well. Uh, and you know, we're starting, you know, obviously it's a global issue. Um, the, the storage of oil has become kind of a, a, a bottleneck uh, in the whole process. So we're producing far more than we can, than what there is a demand for as a result of the, the COVID virus and people sheltering in place. And so the problem is, is that you know, production continues while supplies build up and, and storage becomes the, the breaking point. So you know, not too far back, we had the barrel of oil was in a negative value proposition. So at least we're, our barrels of oil are not a negative value. So that's positive. Unemployment claims for, in Alaska have, have just shot up through the roof to historic numbers that we've never seen before. So I did report on that a couple of weeks ago or last week. Uh, the claims continue to increase. So I've read reports that they're upwards to 70,000 new unemployment claims in Alaska, but we'll look at some labor data to see where that's, uh, what that looks like. For me personally, it's like I said, it's springtime. It's been great. Uh, I've been walking with my dog every day, so that keeps my spirits up. Work has actually been going well. It's funny how uh, I am working from home and I've found that I'm, it can be very effective working from home. And uh, the, the, the video meeting tools that we have uh, are, are very effective, right? And, and employees are beginning to, to use them and to, and to yeah, get things done. So I haven't seen at all a, a downtick in our productivity where I work. So that's a positive. I think my kid, she's wrapping up school. So I know um, I feel pretty depressed for the seniors this year that are gonna miss out on everything that there is related to the social aspects. Um, but I think we're learning to adapt. And for my wife is out today, you know, planning on, planning on an event for her, for one of her coworkers whose birthday it is. So they're trying to, while keeping their social distance, uh, set up some kind of uh, fun event for uh, her coworker. And I saw my neighbors had, they had a long procession of cars. I didn't know that, I mean, it was at least 30 plus cars and a fire truck even uh, that drove by their house waving. So people are finding creative ways to stay engaged with each other, to, to put a smile on each other's faces. So that's a positive. Uh, I think uh, f for myself, I'm beginning to think about what happens during the summer and, you know, and travel plans even. So, you know, at least for me, uh, the outlook is starting to look up. Um, I can tell you that um, the, the state has eased its hunker down rules such that restaurants can now open and have uh, customers in, you know, which is a positive. I think I just read today that there is a, a requirement that people wear masks in public Right, so so you must uh, wear some kind of face mask if you're going to be in public, um, and otherwise, yeah, things seem to be easing up. Right, all indicators seem to be that we need to figure out how to open the economy back up. So with that, let's go ahead and look at some data. So we have, uh, you know, let's start with the Department of Revenue to start. Right, where this is probably the more depressing data, where we had. It was back a couple weeks ago on Monday where we were in negative territory on a, a barrel of Alaska North Slope West Coast crude. And so we're back into the, the low teens, which is a positive, but you know, if you told anybody a year ago that Alaskan oil was selling at $13 a barrel, it would have definitely, uh, it, it, would have, uh, it would have caused them upset, upset people, right? And, there, and it's uncertain what, uh, what oil is gonna do. I, Conoco, we read, their news released that they were going to cut production by half, right, by 50%. Um, and so, you know, that, uh, hopefully that eases, it eases the oversupply issue, but at the same time, it's a local employment issue, right? So well, the concern is the fallout related to cutting production in half. What does that do to the, the economics of jobs? So, uh, you know, more to come on that. We'll see how, how companies respond. 
We also have, this is coming out of the federal, a federal agency, labor data for Alaska. And so we have claim data that's up through April 18th. And so I, I don't have the column headers or out of screen here, but you can see, so we have the filed week ended initial claims, um, reflecting the week ended and then continued claims. So there's the initial claims and the continued claims that we're kind of interested in looking at. And so these are uh, new claims coming in, in this column here. And then these are the continued ongoing claims. So you can see as of right around mid, mid April, we were at just under 50,000 claims where it looks like during a regular period, anywhere between the high 4,600, 4,500 up towards uh, the, uh, you know, well, it seemed like it picked up around the holidays and then back down, but no more than, you know, more than 10,000 at the peak during 2019. Whereas now we've seen week over week increases well beyond 10,000 had 11,000 in March jumped to under 20,000 late March. Then we had over 30,000 early April and now we're up to just under 50,000, uh, in mid-April, and I suspect the numbers that I read in the paper, they were preliminary, but they reported close to 70,000 uh, unemployment claims. And that's, you know, we're not a big state. There's uh, around 700,000 plus or minus in Alaska. I just haven't checked the demographic data recently. Uh, but we're not a big state. We're well under a million. So these numbers are significant, right? These are these are unemployment claims because part of Alaska is you know, our, our, our population there are young people that aren't gonna work, right? So anybody under 16 years of age probably isn't gonna fall into your employment data anyway. So to have 70,000 people or even 50,000 people on unemployment is, uh, it's unprecedented. So that's kind of the bad news. Now, so on the positive news related to Corona is that here's some data that is published by Department of Health and Social Services. So they've done a great job of, they've done a great job of being a spokesperson for the state of, uh, diagnosed cases, keeping people up to date, and then also, you know, reinforcing that you should stay at home, you should uh, shelter in place, you know, please do your best to not spread and uh, transmit this disease to other people. So you can see the total cases we've got as of today, it's May 2nd, 365, a lot of recoveries. Uh, we're, we maintained our, I think in the last week, we haven't seen any new deaths, so that's a positive. Uh, and you can see when you look at the curve here that we really did seem to spike in mid to late March. And then the uh, confirmed case counts have just dropped significantly uh, to the point where, yeah, it, you feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And so Anchorage seems to be where the, the predominant number of them are. Um, I live, let's see if I even have my group on here. I live in the pink, so I'm in the Masu borough area. So we have a few parts on here, but it, it is, pretty well distributed across the state uh, and it's based on this data it's it, it looks good so that's the positive uh, I think uh, the tourism industry has been hit hard I saw earlier this week that uh, so there are some tour companies that have just shut down operations for the summer in Alaska this coming year and that would reduce the number of tourists that we would see by 800,000 which is that's an, that's, that's an incredible number. That's more than the number of people that live in the state. But to, to not have those number of visitors, it means a couple things. There, there, is, a, there is a silver lining. Um, you know, so the, the economic blow of lo a lost tourism season will be significant. And the upside for Alaskans, and this will be the silver lining, is that this may be the year that you need to go out and see Alaska yourself. You won't be competing with anybody else to go see Denali, to see all the other parts of the state that are beautiful. Uh, and I had a couple trips planned myself, but they were kind of off the path anyway. But I, I hope to do those because there's nothing like um, summer in Alaska is pretty nice. I will say that. You can get a nice sunny day. It's hard to beat. So I'm looking forward to that. So that's it. That's uh, the week from, uh, that's the COVID update from Alaska for the week of May 2nd. Uh, you know, thanks for watching. Hope you're being safe. Uh, take care as always. And we'll see you next time.